All right, today I'm working on a 2012 Infiniti EX35. All right, this transmission is the RE7 R01A, rear wheel drive, seven speed transmission. This actually is my first one that we're gonna be tearing down. And the problem with this, this comes actually comes from a, um, a very good referral. And the problem with this is it has a clogged filter. Basically, you start it up, you can hear the whining noise, and the whining noise that you're hearing is the pump starving for oil because the main sump filter is clogged with clutch material. All right, I don't know if it's from the converter or if it's from one of the clutch packs uh, internal to the trans. What I did do before we pulled it out is I sampled the fluid because uh, I wanted to make sure that there was no water in here uh, to see that the guy would need you know, extra work and I would have to get the okay, make sure he wanted to do everything. But there didn't seem like there was evidence of water in here. So we got the clock screen. I did have to pan down and drain it. Uh, that is confirmed. And basically with this, it's pretty bad. You drive it maybe two or three blocks, it would stop moving. Uh, shut it off and then you, you know, a minute or two it would drain back and then you can start it again and drive another couple of blocks. We really didn't even drive the car because I know we were going to get stuck but pretty much when you start it right away even when the car is cold you can hear it you can hear the whining noise and a lot of times when you're dealing with a clock screen it would happen more when the car gets hot it would get worse and worse as you drive the car you wouldn't be able to drive it you know a certain distance before you started to hear the warning noise. This, right off the bat. And I just pulled it from the parking spot into the shop. All right, we put the hot flush machine on it because I, uh, I wanted to get this thing nice and clean. And when we looked at it, at the screen, you know, had a decent amount of clutch material on it. So again, we're gonna see if it is possibly the converter or if it's something internal to the trans. If all the clutch packs and stuff look good in the transmission, then we'll know that it's the converter. I actually have a converter coming uh, from out of state, so it's gonna take a couple days to get here. I got my banner kit with pistons coming, uh, also out of state, and I'm hoping that'll be here tomorrow. So we're gonna tear this thing down tomorrow morning. And there isn't a lot of, I checked my, uh, my tech service ATSG, there is no book yet on this RE7 transmission, but I did watch a teardown video and I took some notes of uh, clutch packs, names of clutch packs, sprigs. Uh, there are two anti-rattle clips in here when the RE5 uh, only has one. It's a, it's a little different setup, but it's similar, very similar to the RE5 R01A. Um, didn't look like, you know, uh, uh, looks like a nice transmission to work on. This is another one where a uh, com computer is inside. So I'm going to be getting a valve body from the dealer and I'm assuming it's going to have to be programmed. Now I was talking to somebody on a site that I belong to through Facebook and I says, hey, what are you guys doing with the valve bodies? Are you changing them? You know, I wasn't sure because the person the company uh, reman that I get all my valve bodies from do not do these yet. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe they're really not that bad. But when I was talking to um, people out there, you know, in the field out there in the industry, rebuilders, they do change the valve body. So I'm electing to change it and I don't want to have an issue anyway. Um, and I had said, okay, so I'm going to order from the dealer and I guess I'll have to get a programmer here. And he wrote back and says he didn't have to have this program and he doesn't know if it was done beforehand or what. So I'm assuming it's gonna have to be, but we're gonna get it, install it. We have to put it in, oil, uh, install the transmission, oil it up, and go from there. If it needs to be programmed, I will have a towed. If I, uh, there's a certain guy that I like that's about two miles away, that's very good with all this, you know, late model, advanced stuff, the guy's fantastic. Um, so I would have the car towed to him and then we can pick it up and drive it back. So, um, I got four bolts in the pan because I did have the pan down. I'm going to take some of the bolts out of the bell housing, some out of the pump, and some out of the extension housing, just so the tear down goes a little quicker. I'll have that already done. Um, and that's about it. So, tomorrow morning, I'm going to leave my notes here, and I will catch up with you guys tomorrow morning for the tear down of this RE7 R01A with a clock filter.
Okay, before we get into tearing down the transmission, there's a couple of things that I found out after the fact that I just wanted to fill you in on. Okay, so first, I ordered a, a banner kit and looking on um, Transcend, that's Transstar's online ordering, uh, gives you a description. So it says a banner kit included in the kit, you know, it says, uh, well, the description said overhaul kit, frictions, uh, no steels with pistons. All right, so I order that and I open up the kit and there's just the overhaul kit and the set of frictions and there are no pistons in there. So I call my rep and, you know, of course, he has a different description in his computer uh, for the company. It just says overhaul kit and uh, frictions. So I says, well, don't you have a listing on, on the three pistons? I said, you know, it's like an RE5. And he looked around. He says, I have no listing at all for pistons, molded pistons for this transmission. So I'm, I'm you know, looking at these pistons, which are here. These are the old ones. The transmission is built already. And I actually got them separate. So I said, you know, these things look exactly like the RE5, R05A pistons. So I called, the maker of the kit was Transtech, which is Freudenberg. So I call them because I have a friend that works there. I have his direct line. So I call him, leave a message. He calls me back 15 minutes later and I'm telling him, I says, hey, you know, the RE7, uh, the three molded pistons, I said, are they the same as the RE5? And he got into his computer and he actually has them listed in his computer for the piston kit RE5 slash RE7. So hey, the pistons are the same. So what I did was I just bought the three separately uh, from Transstar and I was able to change them. So just to let you guys know that the three molded pistons in the RE5 RO5A will fit the RE7 RO1A. Okay, same thing. Okay, now the second thing that I found that I like to install is when I build the RE5s for the reverse clutch, I use the super tough snap ring made by Superior. Their part number is K0108 for that snap ring. It's a thick snap ring. A lot of times the other snap ring, which is a little flimsy and doesn't really, you know, and sits in a groove. Um, I, I don't even think the groove is that deep, but, you know, it has the tendency to pop out the original one. So Superior came up with a much tougher, you know, uh, snap ring, they call it a super tough. So when you put it in, you know, it takes a little bit for that to come out. You know, you got to even use a screwdriver to get it out. But you, there's a whole procedure to measure it. You got to cut it a little bit. And I kind of do it so it locks itself in place. All right. So I said, you know, hey, that looks the same also. So I, I asked my rep on Transor, he says, we just have it labeled as RE5, RO5A. So he gives me the number to Superior, so I call them, and I, I email them also, but, you know, I'm up to the point, and I don't know how long it's going to take for them to email me back, but I'm in the midst of building this unit. I ordered it, not knowing if it was going to fit or not, but I'm assuming it was because it looked exactly the same. So I get a number, and somebody actually picked up, and I said, you know, I have a question about the KO-108 snap ring and the RE5. Uh, so he says, let me get a technician for you. Okay, no problem. And the guy comes on the phone. So I ask him, I said, I'm doing an RE7, RO1A. And I have, you know, I ordered it because it looks the same, but I want to know if it's going to fit the RE5, you know, the KL108 stack ring. And he says, you know, um, the, call started, well, the call started coming in for that about a year ago uh, from Australia. And yes, it is the same. It will work. So... That's another thing that I wanted to let you know that, that my rep also did not know is the K0108 snap ring, which is labeled RE5, um, will fit the RE7 RO1A, right? You just follow the instructions exactly as it says on the kit, on the, on the snap ring uh, for the instructions, and you can install it. I put that in there also. I don't have the paper, you know, I opened it up and I chucked it, but, you know, that's the part number. Um, so I did want to let you know those two things uh, in case you, you know, get into these transmissions. It's if you can, uh, you know, the RE5, the RE7, again, very, very similar. There are some differences, but the similarities are, it, 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 it's pretty, pretty good.
nice, nice unit to work on, not a bad unit to work on. So you would have to order, you know, the overhaul kit at, with the clutches as a banner kit, and then the RE5, you'd probably have to get them separately, all three separately, and then the staff ring you can also get. So I just wanted to fill you in with those details for the pistons and for the snap ring, and now we can move on to um, the disassembly of the trains. All right, back with you this morning. Continue the tear down on this RE7. All right, first we're gonna get the bell housing on. Between the pump and the bell housing. Alright, so now let's flip this and you know what, let's get the let's get the tail off first. Okay. So the extension housing, we got a bearing here, and then you have your parking mechanism. All right, so we can just unhook the spring, take that out, take the rod, spark pull, and this will come out too. All right, so uh, you don't want to forget this, uh, especially I have a wash tank, I put this in be at the bottom of the wash tank. All right, and then we have a washer here, which is gonna be the race for this bearing. Okay, and then we have the output speed sensor, but this output shaft should come out. ceiling rings on here on this output shaft. Park gear, bearing here. All right, and I'm just going to take the um, bolt out of the output speed sensor. here is blocked off because there is no there is no filler tube. The fill and check is in the pan which we're going to go over now. here. All right, this is just blank. And if it's easier to hook it up and fill it through here, I believe there is enough room to do so. And then you just take the plug out in the back that has the standpipe, which I'm going to show you and wait for it to run out of there. So I just wanted to show you that one thing. You know, we have a pump, 
with a, and we could change the attachment so it's easier for us. You just kind of hook it in and fill it from here. Or you could fill it from the bottom, which I'm going to show you now. Okay, so on the pan, here is the drain, and here is the fill and check. So we're going to take the pan down, just got four bolts on there, still got some fluid I tried to drink last night, but can't get all of it out. crap on a magnet uh, filter is definitely clogged so here again here is the fill so you got your standpipe built into the pan I don't think this thing comes out but you fill it from here of course till it runs out then you fill it again till it runs out just like your typical what you do typically with uh, when the car does not have the dipstick and the drain is right here all right so that is your pan let me see if I can give you a close-up shot of this filter. Maybe I'll put a light on it. And you can see all the... Uh... Well, you know, when I get the valve body off, we can do it then. All right. So let's take this up. All right, let me get more on top. Uh, so you guys could see a little better. Let me just reposition. Okay, so first I'm going to unplug the output speed sensor. All right, and we will move this. Okay, this is your output speed sensor, typically like the RE5 also. All right, now we're going to pull this uh, valve body off. So we can okay, and then up here. Got these two. We got some filter bolts. Okay, I believe that's it. I'll take these out. And these are all different length bolts. So just be careful, you know, how you put them in. Of course, if you put a long bolt, you know, where it doesn't belong, it, it'll stick way high. Okay. Oh, you know what? Take this clip out here. All right, so I got this clip. <clears throat> okay. All right. Well, the clip is out, but it didn't really have to come out if you want to leave the connector in there. Um, you know what? It's a short, short. Um, Yeah, you really have to take that thing out because it's a, it's short. I think I can get in there and unplug it though. Okay. All right, and here is your valve body slash computer, speed sensors, solenoids are under the plastic covers. We'll take a look at that. Here is the connector. This, of course, has an O-ring on it. Alrighty.
All right, let me just reposition now. Let me get rid of this oil. I'm going to reposition and we'll take the gear train out and the drums. All right, so now I'm going to get the pump out. I don't really have a puller, but these pumps should come out fairly easy. So I'm just going to use uh, this little attachment here on my slide hammer. But these pumps, yeah, they just come right out. So on the pump, the clutch in here is the two, three, four, six clutch, and then we have the front brake, uh, uh, front brake piston here. Okay, you have a selective shim, and this ring right here uh, is to seal lube pressure. So it's a pretty critical ring there. So this is, looks like a Teflon ring. All right, and then we'll take this apart. Gotta see if they get that. This will probably come out. And again, you probably got to take all that apart to get to the pump bolts to split the pump apart. Okay, here is the hub. You got a bearing in here. Double sun gear. All right, now we're gonna get the uh, F1 brake out, and there's a sprig behind that. <clears throat> okay, so we just gotta kinda get these <clears throat> out just like this, um, you know, with a magnet or something like that. Okay, well, that's it, there's only two of them. All right, well, I do have a banner kit coming. All right. All right, next we're gonna pull the snap ring out. Um, see if I can get it with this. All right, so this snap ring opening is towards the top of the case of, uh, I don't really think orientation if the snap ring matters, but it was at the top. Okay. So that is out. Let me just turn my one light on here. Give me one second. Okay. This whole setup out. Ah, there he is. Come on. Okay. All right. So we have in here the input clutch. All right. Here is your F1 roller clutch, and we're going to take this off. Okay. You have a bearing here. And I'm going to have a bearing with a lip on it, so actually the bearing is going to go down there. Okay. All right, so this we can put aside for now. Looks like we've got to push that snap ring in to get that out to get the drum out. Okay, we're going to take planetary, another planetary set out. Very similar to the RE5. Okay. All right, now the sun here. I got a 
another sprig. I'm assuming this will probably be the F2 sprig. Right. Ceiling rings, bearings. Okay, next uh, we're going to take the um, the high low reverse, the high and low reverse clutch. For the high and low clutch. Okay. Next coming out is the direct clutch. And, you know, so far the clutches aren't looking that bad, so. I'm thinking, you know, probably more in the converter here. All right, and this is going to sit in here. Like that. Got the washer there. All right, sorry. Okay. All right, so now we're going to come to our first anti-rattle clip. Let me get the snap ring out, and let me see if I can kind of show you where this thing is. I'm going to take the pressure plate out. Okay. Yeah, just mark that spot where it goes. All right. All right, let me just give you a shot inside the case of where this is. Uh, all right, give me one second. Let me, I just wanna flip this case back over. All right, so I got my light shining in there and figure the top of the case, of course, is like the 12 o'clock position and the anti-rattle clip is right here, probably around like 11 o'clock. So that's just something to look for when you're taking one of these apart. RE5, same thing, but it's around the 11 o'clock position. All right, so let me reposition. We're going to take that out, the center support, and then there's another anti-rattle clip all the way on the bottom with the low brake clutch. All right, so I will be right back. Okay. All right, so now let's go ahead and take those out. And this clip here. Okay, so I slid the clip out first. All right, it's kind of held in when you put the pressure plate in and the snap ring. It's held in, that's what that looks like. And from the research that I've done, I believe the one for the low, uh, the low brake clutch is not the same. All right, so let's slide this out. All right, so we have a dish spring, a dish uh, plate, I'm sorry. And that uh, dish is gonna face down, you know, so the the bevel part will face down and then it looks like we have a wave, a wave uh, steel and then your regular steel and then you stack up, okay? All right, now I'm gonna take a snap ring out that holds the reverse, uh, like the piston retainer, spring and, and retainer. It's a little tension on it, so we just got to work it around. Okay. And here is this uh, spring, a little flimsy. All right. And here is the retainer. And that's for the reverse clutch. Right, let's get the spring. Okay, now we're going to take a bearing off right, for the center support. And now what we have to do is get the piston out. And then there's a, a beveled snap ring that's going to have to come out. So let's see if we can just pull this piston out here. Okay. Here's the piston. 
piston. All right, now we've got a snap ring in there. Um, again, as far as the orientation of the snap ring, uh, the opening is facing, uh, I guess you could say the valve body. All right, so this is a pretty heavy snap ring. All right, so the bevel, the bevel part faces up, and this is flat here. Okay. Now this should come out. Oh, it's not going to come out. I got to take the bolts out. There's three bolts, I believe. T45. Three torque 45 holds the center support in. Of course, this thing has to be perfectly straight for it to come out. Okay. All right, so here we have like a fiber washer. Right there. And then you have your ceiling rings. All right, now we're going to take the hub, low brake, and take the hub out. And have another. Uh, like fiber type washer. Okay, now I'm going to get the snap ring out, and there is another anti-rattle clip, and that is also in the 11 o'clock position, because I see where I have the case marked, and that's in the same spot. So let's get the snap ring out. Okay, here's the snap ring. Let me uh, let me bring the camera down a little bit. Okay, all right. Give me one second here. Okay, so I'm going to take the pressure plate out. Okay, and again, the uh, one clip for the uh, reverse was here, and the other one is directly behind that. So they're both in the 11 o'clock position. So let me. See if I can slide this clip out here. That was not coming out so easy. Okay, and this one is smaller. So we have the low reverse and the low brake. Or the reverse, I'm sorry, and the low brake. So two different clips. Shape the same, but the one that goes in the back for the low brake clutch is much smaller. Okay, also with the dish plate, it's going to face down. And these clutches don't look bad, so I'm thinking we had an issue with the torque converter. Okay, so the case pretty much is stripped. All right, I'm gonna get this out. I'm gonna put this in the foot press, press it down, get the snap ring out. Uh, springs and piston I'll get out. Okay, let's put this back here. All right.
right, so let me... Uh, let me just clean the soil up and we'll take a look at, at the other clutches here. I will be right back. All right. So let's take a look first at the high and low clutch. All right, so again, you have um, a bearing here, but it has the lip on it, so it's gonna go on. on the center support, I believe. No, not the center support. Yeah, it does go on the center support. It goes there. All right, and you also have a bearing race here. These are burnt. Steels are burnt as well. All right, and then you have this little wave steel on the bottom. Okay, the direct. Also, they can be changed. No, oh, they're all going to be changed. I got a banner kit coming. All right, let's take this back off. All right, so we have a bearing. Here is our shim or race, which I believe is selective. And now we got the two, three, four, six clutch. this very slightly Belleville spring. Yeah, I can't even see. Yeah, you gotta take the you gotta take this all apart to get the pump apart. Okay, so this is gonna go like that. Alright, so I gotta have to uh, I'm gonna take this ring off here. Then I gotta put this in. Let's see how I'm gonna get this thing out, but I'll have to work on that. Come back. All right, now this, you gotta kind of squeeze this snap ring in and hold it in. something here. See if we can get this thing out. Okay. That was easy enough. Just got to find the end of the snap ring and then I just squeezed in on the four openings and it came right out. This is the input clutch. Let's take a look at this. All right, little uh, one again, a little wave seal in the back here. All right. See what I'm gonna do with this pump. But first, let's take a look at this valve body. All right, 
So here is the, I don't know if you can see the crap in the filter here. So this is what's clogging the screen, you know, and I'm gonna say that's uh, definitely converter. But I'll be getting one of these from the dealer. So the solenoids are under here, solenoids are under here, speed sensors, your processor, uh, neutral switch is incorporated in there as well, and here's your little plug-in. On the RE5, they had many plug-ins. This, they just got one. Now, neutral switch is here. I'm not sure, honestly, if this is sold separately or not. Not sure. On the RE5s, uh, I don't believe it is, and it's probably not on this either. Okay. All right. Let me see if I can get this apart, because I got a little bit here, I gotta put uh, something to get the snap ring out. All right. Let me work on that and I'll be right back. Okay. All right, so I got the snap ring out. Here are the springs and the clutch piston. All right, now we can get the pump bolts out and separate the two halves. looks pretty good no bushing at the front here and you have a bearing instead of a bushing here and this uh, this F1 piston um, I'm gonna just basically see if I can push down where the opening is uh, just kind of push down and work the snap ring around but I just wanted to get the pump apart to show you guys Okay, so we got a dot here, a dot, oh, oh that's at the same gear. Okay, so the dot face is up, and you can't really put this in wrong because we got a recess here. That face is down, and then you have your outer pump gear, and those dots face up. I don't think there is one on this gear, there's not. Okay, and this looks good, the bushing looks okay. All right, so this was my first RE7R01A. Uh, certainly hope you guys enjoyed it. I tried to, once I got the job in and got the okay, I started doing some research so I could try to be as thorough as I can. Uh, hope you all liked it. Uh, this is similar to the RE5. Um, it's similar, that's really about it. It's not the, exactly the same, but it looks like a nice unit to work on. I got my parts coming, and the reason why we got this car in, this was towed in, uh, clocked screen, and by the looks of it, I'm gonna say that more than likely the converter clutch had come apart and clogged the screen. Now, I'm actually not sure of the mileage on this. I think it's over 100,000. 
Um, so I'm waiting for a banner kit with pistons. I'm waiting for my converter. Everything is coming from out of state. Valbot is going to get right out of the dealer. And that's probably about it. I'm going to call and get some, we got some bad steels here, some burnt steels. So I'm going to go through, get some steels as well. And that's about it. RE7, seven speed rear wheel drive. RE7, RO1A. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and we'll see you next one.